How you doing everybody? Brain Smasher back again and you probably guessed this is another collection update because I buy CDs like a crackhead buys crack apparently. Having a nice lazy Sunday. Um, had a really crazy day yesterday kind of. Ah, uh, it's a little loud. Um, went up to Madison, Wisconsin. Um, did some record shopping and uh, for a minute kind of took part in the protest that was going on up there. Uh, it was really amazing to see. Uh, it was just like a, yesterday was just like a flurry of many different things. Friday night I filmed my drunken Q&A thing. I made a fucking disaster out of the whole thing. I'm going to have to be editing. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of work to edit what I made into something worth watching. Uh, I guarantee you it's going to be pretty great, um, but in the wake of it, I realized I forgot a ton of shit, uh, and watching the footage and stuff, I just fucking stumbled through the whole thing. Um, so, stay tuned for that. Um, so I got pretty drunk, and I went to bed, I just splat right in the bed, fell asleep, and then woke up early the next day, like early for me to even get up and me and my buddy drove up to Wisconsin uh, to do that. And then um, on the way back, so it was really foggy. It's been super weirdly warm for January. Really weird. Global warming's a hoax. Um, so it's been really weird and it was super fucking foggy driving from Iowa to Wisconsin yesterday and uh, driving back. We actually left Madison early earlier than I had planned and the fog fucked me up driving and I missed a turn off and we wound up like turning a three hour drive into a five hour drive so I was late for the live chat thing with Eric Bauer, Bob Phantom and Marty uh, but I we worked it out um, I hope you liked it if you want to check out the two and a half hour long live stream, go to Eric Bauer's channel, it's on there, it's pretty good, uh, it was great chat with those guys, and I'd like to do it again uh, sometime soon, so I hope you guys enjoyed that, thanks for participating if you did, and watching, and commenting, and stuff like that, uh, while I show you what I got, uh, we're going to be listening to Abysmal Grief, Strange Rites of Evil, uh, this came out in 2015, I want to say, it kind of flew under my radar, maybe even 14, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I don't know, I felt that I chose to play this during my video because I felt like if I described it to you, it just wouldn't sound as appealing as I think it really is. Uh, it's an Italian doom band, so you know, you can kind of expect maybe a little more, I guess, rock and roll sort of vibe coming from influences from like Paul Chain and Death SS and stuff like that. I think that's kind of where this draws a lot of influence. Um, in a way it also kind of reminds me of like if Typo Negative were like a traditional Italian doom band or something. But anyways, I really, really recommend this album and I hope you enjoy listening to it in the background while I flap my gums about these beautiful babies that just came into my life. You know, I actually, I really, I'm really happy with what I found up there. When I go to a record store in another city or something, you know, like sometimes I kind of feel like I spend, you know, 30, 50, 80 bucks on stuff that it, it were kind of a stretch. Maybe it's something I was like, you know, I'll take a chance on this. Maybe this is good. A couple of maybes or whatever. But this stack is stuff that I'm super happy to own. Some stuff that I didn't know about, but yeah, we'll talk more about specifically as I go through it. So, um, yeah, I'll just start from the top here. Uh, this is Empyrium where at night the wood grouse plays. Imperium is one of my favorite bands. I think they're fucking amazing. I think they're super underrated. And this was the only Imperium album that I didn't have yet. Uh, this is some weird Russian bootleg version or whatever. I kind of don't care. Um, not much to speak of art-wise there, but beautiful acoustic album. Uh, the flutes and actually, you know, flute is the only non-traditional instrument on this album. Um, but, you know, if you like Olver's second album, Kveldsanger, and you haven't heard this, you're fucking up. This is a beautiful acoustic album. 
Um, also, Wyland is an album they did after this. Um, this is also similar, but uh, I don't know. I heard this band's latest album. I couldn't really get into it. Um, but yeah, the first four Imperium albums, amazing essentials as, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm happy to have the last missing piece of my essential Imperium collection. Uh, next, I've got Kill, Burning Blood. I played a Kill album in one of my videos a couple of videos ago. Um, goat metal, I guess you would say, just fucking unhinged hellfire, pretty much. Um, I don't know, I guess this kind of thing to most people would, would seem kind of generic, but there's just something about Kill that just, it just works with me. Um, so yeah, Swedish hellfire fucking black metal. Um, no melodies, just goat blasting and killer punishing riffs. Um, happy to pick that up for cheap. Um, I did hear their No Catharsis album, which came out before this, and I really liked it. Uh, but the one that came out more recently than this one, I wasn't too hot on. Anyways, uh, next we've got Celestial. Really good friend of mine that plays in this band. Um, Tanner from Obsequiae plays in this band as well as Tim Glenn, the drummer from the live Obsequii band, as well as Jason Walton from Agalock. Um, if you're not familiar with this, this came out on Bind Ruin in 2011 or 10 or something like that. Uh, probably says for all my lazy, I don't know. Um, but beautiful field recordings from Minnesota mixed with uh, atmospheric doom. Uh, it's really slow really really slow and beautiful pictures in this booklet uh, happy to finally pick this up I've, I was kind of on the fence about it and I decided um, well obviously since this guy's one of my best friends I need to own this but um, I listened to it a couple times and I was just like I don't know if I'm feeling it so I didn't buy it and I didn't download it um, so now I have it I don't have to him and haw about that anymore um, love that guy next Death Spell Omega, The Synergy of Molten Bones. Uh, this is their latest full length from last year. Um, I gave it a listen last year and it didn't make my top 10 list because I didn't have it, but I'm still just not really sure where I sit with this band. Um, their early material, the pre Miko Aspa stuff, as far as I'm concerned, is some of the finest no bullshit black metal ever recorded post. 2000 or so, you know, um, the, the post 90s era of black metal. That stuff is fucking infernal and amazing. However, this new era of Death Spell Omega in the beginning, I was totally in. On 2004, when Sea Monumentum Required Circumspice came out, I was floored. That was probably my album of the year in 2004. And since then, I've been interested to watch the band progress. You know, there was. Kenos, Drought, Chaining the Catacomb, and stuff like that, but the last few releases, they've kind of lost me. Um, it almost seems like a black metal Goreguts to me, and Goreguts is a band, I think only Goreguts can do that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's just kind of my take on it, but, you know, I just figured, I maybe this is amazing, I need to give it a fair shake, I need to, you know, and so I bought it. Next, I've been wanting to get a copy of this for a while. Dizma Toward the Megalith. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. This is the Profound Lore Digipack. It's got a couple of bonus tracks on it. Killer fucking artwork. Uh, New Jersey Death Metal. Members of Evoken, Abazagorath, uh, you name it. The drummer from uh, Death Fortress is on here. But yeah, killer, kind of old school sort of... Um, death metal yeah great band next I'm really stoked to fucking have this and we listened to it in the car on the way home yesterday Funeral Mist Devilry now this is a reissue of Devilry Devilry came out in 1998 originally and this has bonus tracks of the demo called Havoc which came out in 1996 um, so this as far as I know fills out my Funeral Mist discography uh, and it's been a while since I listened to these guys. Um, and I, I kind of think I like this material a little bit more than their debut, Salvation. So I'm stoked to have that and be listening to that. 
Um, I don't know if I had even heard either of those EPs before owning this, so happy to have it. All right, so this is a, a, a pretty strange project here. This is uh, Karen Crisis's Gospel of the Witches. Now, I was a little hesitant because I didn't quite know what I was getting into when I picked this up, so I'm happy it was kind of cheap. Um, but So I'll kind of tell you what brought me to getting this. Um, there's this band, Eiffel, Eiffel Duoff, from Italy. Uh, they started out in like 98, 99 or so. They have an album called Painter's Palette, and then um, something about my dog or something like that. Anyways, these, uh, no, Eiffel Duoff also did an album called Hemmed by Light and Shaped by Darkness. And uh, that was like a breakaway album for me, for that group. Uh, <clears throat> and a really super interesting, super challenging album um, that I really enjoy all the time. Um, it's, it's a really interesting listen. I highly recommend checking that out. Strange, sort of serpentine, almost melodic, almost dissonant sort of guitar work with really, really innovative vocalies, vocals by Karen Crisis. Um, I'm not familiar with Crisis whatsoever, so I don't really have any background on who she is. Uh, but she does an amazing job on that Ethel Duoth album. Uh, the drummer on that Ethel Duoth album is, what's it, Marco Miniman, I think I want to say his name is. Super talented. So it's a really strange album that I really was intrigued by. And what I found out then was uh, Ethel Duoth then broke up. And I also didn't know until today that Karen Crisis is married to the main guy in Ethel Duoth. And so... Um, since breaking up, they did this, Karen Crisis, Gospel of the Witches. Um, and it kind of carries the torch from that strange serpentine sort of riffing that I talked about uh, into a different direction a little bit. Uh, but it's, it's pretty similar, so that's why I was curious to pick this up. Um, also, the singer slash bass player from Immolation sings on this. Sometimes, and also the guy from Tombs sing on, sings on this. Tombs, the American New Jersey, maybe, uh, metal band. And the drummer from Tombs is on this. So, really strange lineup from different kind of areas and walks of genres. Uh, but it's really strange. It's going to be interesting. I'm happy to check this out and give it some more listens. Um, definitely check out that Ethel Duoth album, though, if, you're, if that sounds up your alley. It's really bizarre. Um, let's see, before we left... Uh, my buddy, who Ron, who we went with on the trip, uh, does Pagan Flames. So we looked through his uh, distro, and he'd gotten some things in from Wolf, Werewolf Produ Promotions. <laughs> um, Werewolf Promotions is one of those uh, labels I'm just like, I swear by everything they put out. I don't wind up buying everything they put out because no one distributes it, it seems, in the United States. And every time you order from them, you wind up paying, like, I don't know, 10 bucks for the CD and 10 for shipping and then you wait two months and then it shows up so you know I don't really order everything uh, they put out but it seems like they put out a lot of great stuff um, so this so I got three titles from uh, werewolf because um, pagan flames had done a trade and gotten a bunch of their stuff in so that was awesome to be able to just go to my buddy's house and pick up stuff that I normally have to order from fucking Poland um, he suggested that I get this. I don't know anything about it. He played it for me, and it was really cool. The band is called Caruos, and they are a French band, uh, three-piece. <coughs> I, I don't know. I don't know much about it. I've only listened to it for a minute, and then, like, the minute I listened to it, I was like, yeah, I'll take one. So then he also... I got a copy of Stvosh. I've been seeing Stwars of this band. I found out, I was like, I'm sick of mispronouncing this band's name. I looked it up. Uh, S-T-W-O-R-Z is pronounced in Polish Stwosh. Or Stwosh. So I'm going to try and start saying that pr correctly. This is their two 2015 record. Uh, I'm not going to know how to pronounce this. Zagoni Bogau. Um, I also found out how to pronounce uh, Vedru Jansi Viator. I have been saying Wedrujasi Weater, so I looked it up, I was like, I'm trying to be a little more respectful of bands from other countries and not look like a fucking stupid American that doesn't know how to pronounce anything. Um, I, it's just kind of starting to become like a, an annoyance for me when I'm watching 
other YouTubers talk about albums, and we just, it seems like we don't even put any effort into trying to understand what the albums are about, what the language is of the, of the music and stuff. So I want to kind of try and put an effort forth into at least pronouncing band names correctly, or at least trying. I feel like even at the worst, it's going to be more entertaining for people from Poland to watch me try and say something in Polish. So, Stwosh. Uh, so this is their 2015 album, um, Folk Metal. Really cool. Um, you can kind of hear some hints of Vedrujansi Viator in it. Um, happy to pick this up. Next, uh, this is a demo compilation from a band, Merkwood. These guys uh, took part in the summoning tribute I talked about a couple of videos ago. Uh, good stuff. I'm not too familiar with it at all. I want to say this group is out of Missouri. So this is a compilation of three demos, a split, and an exclusive track. Um, so looking forward to checking that out too. Let's see. Next, I've got this fucking album is so good. I'm really liking this. Um, this is um, I showed this band in my LP update in my last video, Sorg's Fart. Um, this is the debut album, which as far as I can tell, seems to like it's more uh, well-received and well-reviewed than that second album, which I have on LP. So I found this for cheap. Looking forward to check it out. Norwegian folk metal. It's a solo project. Um, that LP that I have is pretty killer. So if this is better reviewed than it, then I imagine this is probably pretty fucking sweet. Next, uh, so Marty... Worm talked about a band I ordinarily stay totally clear of, Tiamat, a couple of videos ago, and he was talking about one of their records, um, and he convinced me to listen to it, and I really liked it. I can't remember which one it was. Wild Honey, maybe? Anyways, I decided to maybe it was time to check out um, early Tiamat, because as far as I remember... Um, their stuff isn't all that weird. It wasn't until Wild Honey, I want to say, that they got kind of experimental. So I got The Astral Sleep. This is their 1991 album. I don't think I've ever heard this yet. So looking forward to checking that out. This is a Century Media reissue. So cool to have that. So it kind of seems like an ongoing theme that everything I'm getting is like a compilation or a reissue of uh, older stuff. And this is no exception. Uh, a couple of videos ago, I did a video about Napalm Records, who put this out. This is Sethereals from the Ancient Ruins. Now, I was aware of this, and this came out in 2003, 14 years ago. Can you fucking believe that? Um, when this first came out, I wrote it off as, I guess I thought it was the new Sethereal album, and I didn't, you know, once, um, what's that album? I don't know. Once their second album came out, I, fa I, fa I heard their newer stuff, and I was like, no, not good. I thought this was a new album. Until someone commented on that video, uh, my Napalm Records video, about their... Uh, they did a compilation track on a, comp or a, on a compilation called uh, With Us or Against Us, and I remembered and started doing some digging around, and I realized that this is not at all what I thought it was, and it, it's fucking amazing. So there's uh, three or four songs, three songs on here that were previously unreleased and were recorded in 1998 by Tommy Tatgren. And you know what? I really like Tommy Tatgren's recordings a lot better than Peter Tatgren's. But uh, so three killer songs that were recorded after their second album and never released until now. They're really fucking good. And then it also has their demo, A Hail to the Faceless Angels on here, which I don't think I had heard before, and it's fucking great. So, happy to have, like, Sethereal stuff that I never thought I would hear again, like, 15 years after the fucking fact. Crazy. So, last one I've got here is Shape of Despair. This is Monotony Fields. Amazing, amazing Doom record. Um, I guess this band sort of started off as a funeral Doom band. And they've kind of worked a lot of progression into their style over the last uh, few records. I'm not super familiar with this band. I think I have their album Despair as well. Um, but I'm really stoked to have this finally. This was this is an amazing record. Yeah, so it's been time to pick that up for quite a while. 
so that's my haul for the last two days or so. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you check out some of the stuff that I talk about. Uh, let me know. I'm curious. Have I gotten you into any bands yet? If you've been a long time subscriber for a while, you know, what have you found or discovered through me that you just absolutely love or went on to buy? I'm kind of curious to hear that. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Keep an eye out for my drunken collection update, Q&A, and nacho party coming up soon.